So at the weekend, I was having a chat with a couple of guitar friends about why I'd stopped using my PRS guitar, and I primarily began using my Gibson Les Paul. Now, there was a number of reasons why I chose to change guitars, and I thought I'd share them with you today if you were maybe thinking about buying a PRS or even selling a PRS that you already own, but you're a little bit apprehensive as to whether it's you or the guitar. If you're new around here, I'm Ben Rollins. It's all about live looping on my channel. I do live looping tutorials, live looping performances, all on this magnificent rig here. I've also got a series underway and episode two's on the way about looping without limits where I build this brand new rig. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a video. I'm a massive fan of my PRS, like the incredible quilted maple top, the fantastic playability of the guitar and also the immaculate craftsmanship gone into making it. I would be extremely ungrateful to not appreciate the guitar. That's 100% true. But I have owned it for over 12 months now and there's just a few things that it's just not doing for me. So the spec on my PRS is a violet quilted maple 10 top, custom 24 from the Wood Library. Now this is a cracking guitar. It's got everything you would ever want from a guitar, I guess. But there's just still a few things that it just can't do for what I want my guitars to do. PRS is perfect if you're doing your pop genres, R&B, soul, all them sort of things, because you've got your beautiful clean tones, and then you've got your thick distortions. But when you're trying to do like classic rock, that's when I just find the PRS, it just couldn't do it, period. Now I'm not saying PRS can't do rock at all. Obviously, you know, Blackstone Terry use their uh, PRSs and all those types of guys, but I'm just making you aware that you need to make sure when you buy your PRS, if you want one, to get the correct types of pickups that work with the genre you wanna primarily play. That's where I feel I probably went wrong with my PRS. The pickups on my PRS are the 5815 LTs. So LT stands for low turn, which means the pickups are on the warmer side. Now these pickups are some of the most desirable PRS pickups. You can only get them on the higher end guitars straight out the factory. and You can't buy these pickups off the shelf. Now these pickups sound absolutely superb, clean. Some of the best pickups I think I've ever heard on a clean tone. It's just chimey, great clarity, and great depth to the sound. However, it's a bit of a different story when you start to add distortions to these pickups. The guitar starts to become a bit mucky and a bit muddy. I feel like uh, there's a lot of bottom end to the sound and the, the guitar struggles to cut through the mix, if I'm brutally honest. Uh, it just does not cut through anything. It's great in the studio situation because you can do lots in post to get it to cut through the mix, but to try and keep the integrity of a nice tone that you've got, it's virtually impossible. I don't want to be a PRS hater. There's a lots of things I like about it. The tremolo system is probably one of the best trems I've ever used. It's way better than anything that Fender's whacked out. Yeah, there's a Floyd Rose, but you know, there's a lot of misconceptions I feel with the Floyd Rose. I first feared the Floyd Rose because of the tuning, the tuning mechanism on it. You know, you had to uh, basically reset up the whole guitar if you wanted to do drop D. That's not a problem with the PRS, it's it's great. You just drop down to drop D. Yes, the other strings do go out of tune. You gotta do a bit of a full retune on the guitar, but you don't have to do a full setup. So I'd say it's got the best trem system. The tuning locking heads on the PRS are pure genius. You don't even have to change the strings correctly. You can change them like an absolute amateur and just put them through the once and not wrap them under themselves. You just put them through the once and then you just lock them in and then that's it. It's super solid and dead quick if you have a string breakage to change, which is essential, especially with it being a floating trem. Obviously, if a string breaks, the whole trem goes out of kilter, so you need to change that string as quick as possible to get tuned back up so you can carry on playing the track. The way I primarily get my guitar tones is I rock a Kemper. So I use my Kemper profiler for like everything I do. I very rarely use a real amp these days. I'm just a modern guitarist. Anyways, my main problem with the PRS and the Kemper, the PRS is good with a normal lamp, but it has to like be like a really good amp. And you also have to have like lots of pedals to sort of manipulate the sound, sort of achieve what you actually want to do. But with the Kemper, it works relatively well, but I just can't get for the life of me, my PRS to just cut through the mix when I'm, especially when I'm using it live. Like, I either have to make it really, really loud, and then that's dead unpredictable because obviously it's not the correct way to get it to cut through the mix because venue to venue, gone on the acoustics of the room, it might be dead loud, it might be still quiet, it might be drowning out the whole band or my loop station, whatever I'm using it with. Now, the other way, obviously, is to EQ it. I always find when I'm using it with the Kemper, I have to 
remove an obscene amount of bass at ninety percent of the time, do a lot of adjustments to the mids and also a lot of, to the trebles. But also, I also have to add way too much presence than I should be just to get it to bite and cut. But then obviously as I add all these things and remove the bass, the guitar tone then becomes a bit thin and scratchy. So I then lose the integrity of the guitar tone to combat it not being really audible. So if you want to obviously keep the crispness of the tone that you originally created, that's when you then have to boost the volume and then that's just not the correct way to do it. I just can't get a guitar tone that hits you in the face. It's just way too woofy is the only way I can describe it. It's got too much bottom end to the sound of the guitar and it's just too chunky. Now it's good for a guitar for actually layering in the studio because of that chunkiness. But for one that you want to use live, the fact you just can't get it to hit you in the face and you can't get it to cut through the mix. All these factors just make the guitar for me not applicable to what I want to play. And I don't want this video to deter you if you're maybe buying a PRS SE. I think the SEs are probably some of the best guitars you can get in that price range. You know, it's better than some of the offerings coming from Gibson in Fender. That's for sure. You get the same quality floating trim as on the higher end PRSs. And I think on some of them, you get the really cool tuner locking heads, which is some of the things I love about my PRS. Now, I don't want this to deter you because obviously these are different tier PRSs. So some of the negatives I'm saying, obviously, are weighted by the amount of money that has been spent on the instrument. Now, one of my major disappointments with the PRS that I think I should address is the fact that after only about two weeks of owning it, all the gold on the bridge and in areas of the tuner pegs had begun to tarnish away. Now, I think this is super unsatisfactory and really disappointing for such a high-end and premium product to happen so soon. The only thing I can put it down to is cheaper components and parts and also a cheaper finish than we think we're paying for. I just think it's something that's important to raise. If you're a pop guy, R&B, soul, I think the PRS is perfect for you. Like it's, it's known for being the session player's guitar. And I would agree with that. Mine's got a coil tap, so it's got both single coil pickups, so I get that Strat sound. But then it's also got the humbuckers, so I get the Gibson sound. Now, my main problem with the PRS is I think it's trying to be a little bit of everything at once, which is fine. You know, you get two for one, you to get value for money when you buy your PRS. But I feel like it loses its um, own tone. It just doesn't have its own sound because it's trying to be a little bit of everything, catering for the session guy. Now, that's not necessarily a problem or fully true because when it comes into its own is when you have it on the neck pickup. When you're rocking the neck pickup with a little bit of overdrive, it just has this thick, creamy, incredible texture to the guitar sound that sounds incredible for like really emotive guitar solos. Perfect for what I want to do in the studio. Although I mentioned I can't really get it to cut through the mix as nice as I'd like live, that doesn't necessarily mean I can't use it in the studio because there's lots I can do in post to actually make it come through the mix. One of the first issues I encountered with the PRS was actually trying to get the guitar strap onto it. Now the guitar strap pegs that come on it are super duper wide, so I couldn't get any of my guitar straps to actually fully sit over it and under. So they just kept popping off and popping off and I really persisted with it. But in the end, I just had to get some strap locks and change them out. Not really a major issue, but you know, it's another $5.99 you gotta spend on some strap locks when you've already spent a fortune on the guitar. It's just something to bear in mind. Now, would I buy a PRS again in the future? Depends. Depends where I'm at at that point in life. What am I wanting? What do I need from the guitar? Other improvements on the PRS I've already got. Obviously, maybe different pickups, things like that. Maybe. I might do. Right now, no. I don't think I would. Now, would I sell the PRS I currently have? No, I wouldn't sell it because it's the only guitar I have with 24 frets. And it's also the only guitar I have with a tremolo system on. So for those reasons, I have to keep it as an option. So that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and found some value in understanding why I no longer use a PRS. If you're thinking about buying a PRS, let me know in the comments below about what type you're thinking about buying. I'd love to know. If you'd like to see some more videos from me, please feel free to like and subscribe and also check out some of my other videos around here that are over on my channel. I'll see you next time.